الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مدل له وما يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوى الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم ركيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أستقل حديث كتاب الله 
wa khairin huda huda muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharral umuri muhdathatuha wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah wa kullu bid'atin dalalah wa kullu dalalatin fil nar verily ya ikhwan all the praise and all of the glorification and all of the magnification it is due to allah tabarak wa ta'ala and i publicly i inwardly and i outwardly declare and attest to the fact that there is nothing or no one worthy as a deity except for Allah Taala, and I bear witness that Muhammad, the son of Abdullah alayhi wasallatu wa taslim, better known as Abu Qasim sallallahu alayhi wasallam, is the finality of messengers that were sent to guide all of mankind. Whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're red, whether you're yellow. The Prophet sallallahu was sent to guide all mankind to the deen al-haq. <clears throat> the topic for today, the topic for today, ya ikhwan, it is the most important topic of your life, ya ikhwan, in terms of the ibadah, worshiping Allah ta'ala, and the great a'imma, ahl al-ilm, or the ulama, al-rabbaniyun from the past, they had written down many important topics concerning this issue. And the issue that we're going to ta tackle today, B'nai Ta'ala, is the issue of, and it's taken from the branch of Al-Qawaid Al-Fiqiyah. Al-Qawaid Al-Fiqiyah Khamsa Kubra, and we're going to take from these five axioms, the first point, B'nai Ta'ala, which is the most important. And everything in the deen is based upon this, Ya Ikhwan, Al-Amur, Al-Amur bi maqasidiha Al-Amur bi maqasidiha That the perfection or the arrangement of your actions is based upon your intention. So if you had intended something other than to seek the face of Allah Ta'ala, then ya ikhwan, ya ikhwan, ya ikhwan, you'll find that your actions, your deeds, your intentions, it'll be filled with naqis. It'll be batil. It will not be accepted from Allah Ta'ala. And this is where Allah Ta'ala, He has said in His book, which has been revealed from the seven heavens, called Allah Ta'ala, after I say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Ala Lillahi Deen Al Khalis. Allah Ta'ala has mentioned, Ala Lillahi Deen Al Khalis. Is it to Allah? Is it to Allah Ta'ala? Is it not to Allah? That the sincere religion is due, ya ikhwan. That we came here today, bi'idni lai ta'ala, not to meet our friend for a coffee. We came here not to meet up with the sisters and to talk about how beautiful your goal is, sister. We did not come here today to sit and talk about the politics back in our country. But rather, ya ikhwan, ya akhwan, we came here today to worship Allah ta'ala and Allah alone. Allah ta'ala goes on to say another ayah. An ayah which is a sa'iqa. It is a thunderbolt stronger than the thunder that's coming outside in the head of the believer. Allah Ta'ala went on to say, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْمَدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَحُدِّينَ حُنَفَاءَ And they were not commanded except for to be sincere to Allah. And this is the right religion, Ya Ikhwan. Ya Ikhwan, there are two aspects, Ya Ikhwan, as the ulama al-Rabbaniyun, they went on to say that your action no matter how sincere it is, no matter how pure it is, if it is not together with this other thing, Ya Ikhwan, it is rejected. You can have the most purest heart amongst us with the most pure intention, but if it is not coupled with this other thing, akhlasahu wa aswamu, that it has to be sincerely for the sake of Allah Ta'ala, and Ya Ikhwan, Ya Ikhwan, it has to be in accordance to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Allah ta'ala went on to say وَمَا أَتَاكَمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخَذُوهُ وَمَا نَحَاكُمْ أَنُوا فَانْتَهُ Whatever the Messenger of Allah he gives you, you take it. And whatever he tells you to stay away from, then you stay away from it, Ya Akhwan. Ya Akhwan, Muslims get up every day and they come to the masjid and they say Allahu Akbar but the salat is not according to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can come with a sincere intention. <coughs> but Ya Ikhwan, is that enough? No, Ya Ikhwan, we find where Allah Ta'ala went on to say, فَمَنْ مَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ أَمْرَ صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِإِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Allah Ta'ala went on to say, for those who fear standing in front of the Lord, 
for those who are going to meet Allah Taala, and they find themselves that if they worship something other along with Allah Taala, you'll find ya ikhwan that this is shirkin billahi Taala. So we have to be forewarned ya ikhwan ya akhwat that when you give your money to the masjid. The one who gives his money, who does it in secret, is better than the one who does it in front of the people, unless he's trying to encourage the people to give something for the sake of Allah Ta'ala. And as we know, ya ikhwan, it is from amongst the greatest, most auspicious deeds that when you do your action, that your action in the beginning, it is for the sake of Allah Ta'ala. In the middle, it stays the same for the sake of Allah Ta'ala, and at the end of the intention, ya ikhwan, it stays the same. Can you imagine a man who was in the masjid and he went there to worship Allah Taala and he said Allahu Akbar, but he heard that a jamaat came or a big sheikh came or a beautiful woman came in the background, and while he or she was there, they decided in the middle of the salat to beautify it a little bit more so the people can look and say Masha Allah, look at his salat, look at her salat. MashaAllah, listen to him recite Quran, listen to him uh, say the adhan, and you go a little bit more to impress the people, ya ikhwan. We find, ya ikhwan, that this is very, very dangerous. The Prophet wasallam, he said in a hadith which is collected in Imam al nasai as well as you'll find this hadith in the Silsila, al hadith al sahiha wa sahahu al baniyu where the Prophet wasallam, he said, Inna Allah Azza wa Jal la yuqbalu min amri illa ma kan lahu ma kan lahu khalisan wa abtughiya bihi wajhuhu aw kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allah Allah he does not accept any action any action without it being sincerely devoted to him seeking his face, This is an extra ziyadah, as they say. That you have to, first of all, be mukhlis lillahi ta'ala while you're doing your action. And on top of that, when you do your action, you are not doing it for any adran, any other benefit. You are doing it, ya ikhwan. Also, ya ikhwan, so you can seek the face of Allah ta'ala. And we ask the brothers this question, what is better than al jannah? And when we ask for Jannah, we've been told from the Prophet to ask for Jannah and for Dosal A'la, the highest level. And is there something better than Jannah and for Dosal A'la, ya ikhwan? Yes, to gaze upon the face of Allah Ta'ala. That's why when we do something, you give your money, you feed the people, you do an act of sadaqah, you send money back home. There should not be any reason. So the people say, a brother Abdullah gave 50,000. He gave more than Brother Muhammad, who only gave 10,000. SubhanAllah, what a righteous man. Ya ikhwan, if we do that, if we do something like this, we forget why we're doing our action, ya ikhwan. We possibly could be committing what they call shirkaniya, which is a tremendous topic, ya ikhwan, we don't have time to get into today. Mixing your intentions. Mixing your intentions while you're doing something. I'm going to worship Allah. And I'm going to make the people happy with me. I'm going to, I'm going to give some sadaqa, and I want to be, the people say that I am a very generous person. Mixing your intentions, ya ikhwan, shirk and niya. So we find, ya ikhwan, ya akhwan, that the ulama al-Rabbaniyun, they have not left this topic, ya ikhwan, something that is devoid of benefit. And from the benefit, ya ikhwan, that we can get is that we find that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said in a very, very beautiful, beautiful hadith where the Prophet went on to say, and there's two different wordings. One is in Bukhari and the other one is in Muslim. And this one, I believe it is in Sahih Muslim where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went on to say, إِنَّمَا أَعْمَالُ بِنِّيَا وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ إِمْرِئٍ مَا نَوَى فَمَنْ كَانَتْ حِدْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَحِدْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَمَنْ كَانَتْ حِدْرَتُهُ لِلدُّنْيَا يُصِيبُهَا أَوْ إِمْرَأَةٍ يَنْقِهُهَا فَهِدْرَتُهُ إِلَى مَا حَجْرَ إِلَيْهِ وَكَمَا قَالَ صلى الله عليه وسلم أخرجه بخاري ومسلم ولم مسلم The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he wanted to say in this hadith ya ikhwan you find the great scholars of Al-Islam starting their book of fiqh with this 
Starting the book with hadith with this. Starting the book with tafsir with this hadith. And as Imam Shafi and Imam Ahmed, they want to say that this hadith is a third of the usul, the branches of the religion. So yeah, why listen to it very carefully. The Prophet sallallahu he went on to say that actions are judged according to their intention. And everybody will get what they intended. So he whose migration was for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, then it was for the sake of Allah and his messenger. But he whose intention was to get a worldly benefit or to marry some, some woman in marriage, then he'll get exactly what he has intended to get. So when we look from this, we find that the ulama al rabbaniyun they explain that getting married is a halal thing. But however, the mixed intention, ya ikhwan, and this particular story is of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and the ulama, they call him Muhajir um Qais. That he made hijrah, not for Allah and his messenger, and it's an ibrah for us, a lesson for us, not to look down upon him, but the scholars say that he made his intention to get married for the woman, and not to go make hijrah for the sake of Allah ta'ala. So where are we, ya ikhwan? Where we combine two halal things, doing something for the sake of Allah, and something halal in the religion. We have to be very careful with that. Akuli kuli hada wa staffu lali wa sallam sameen ajmain wa staffu luhu inna huu wa barru luhu. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa usalli wa usallam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajmain. Ya ikhwan, ya akhawat, we find where Allah Ta'ala, he went on to say, Kul, in tukhfu ma fi sudurikum, o tabduhu ya'lamhu Allah. Say, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whether you hide it in your breast, your chest, or you reveal it, Allah Ta'ala, he knows your intention. We are talking about Allah Ta'ala, ya ikhwan. There is no one, ya ikhwan, that can look in the hearts of an individual and know what he's thinking, what he's planning, what he's hoping to do, except for Allah Ta'ala, Allah Akbar. What you think and what's in your heart, it is known to Allah Ta'ala, as he said, Kul in tukfu ma fi sudurikum aw tubduhu ya'lam Allah. Think about this ayah, ya ikhwan. This ayah used to scare the sahaba. They would come out of their house. And they would step forward, and they would step backwards. They would step to the side, they would step to the left. They would begin to talk, they would not talk, wondering, why am I talking? Why am I doing this? Is it for the sake of Allah Ta'ala? And Imam Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah Ta'ala, as they said, that for 20 years he really, really worked hard on this, and he wouldn't do this. He wouldn't talk, he wouldn't speak, he wouldn't say nothing, unless he asked himself, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Where are we compared to these people, these great people? And for Ya Ikhwan, from the issue Ya Ikhwan, when we look at this situation, the scholars have went very, very deep into it and we're just going to skim the surface. That which a person contains in the heart concerning the intention, the ulama rabbaniyun, they broke it down into five, five principles, Ya Ikhwan. From the first one, and the most important one we find, Ya Ikhwan, is the issue of hadith al-nafs. Hadith al-nafs. This is, Ya Ikhwan, the initial thoughts. This is you talking to yourself about a situation. That if you do this, Ya Ikhwan, Allah has overlooked and pardoned this for his ummah. The initial thought to oneself, you won't be held accountable to it. The second one, al-khatir. Inclinations. Notions which follow up the initial thought. While I'm thinking of robbing the money from the masjid, hmm, let me think about it. Okay, now I'm going to go and I'm going to rob the masjid. You're going to get a sin for that, Yahwan. The third one, Yahwan, we find is everybody knows this since they're a little kid, and we've been trained from the sunnah, from reading Surah Al Nas, Al Waswas. These are the devilish inclinations, the things that the devil will whisper to you. You will not be held accountable to that until we go and we do those actions. Ya Ikhwan, and the fourth one is Alham. Planning to do something without firm resolve. You want to go and give some money to the masjid, however, 
However, you want to do something like this, but you don't have a firm resolve. Or you want to do it, but you cannot do it. You find the Ahwan that it can go either way. And the last one, Al-Azam, to have a firm resolve to do something. So you set out with the intention to go visit a brother at the hospital for the sake of Allah Ta'ala. And you try your best, and you do it, and you accomplish it, yeah, Ikhwan. So when we look at this situation, number one, and make this very clear, yeah, Ikhwan, al-amur bi maqasidiha, two points. Akhlasu wa aswab. That you're doing it solely and singly for the sake of Allah Ta'ala. And we want to, yeah, Ikhwan, yeah, Ikhwan, explain to you some of the great statements and we find from amongst them the scholar Ibn Abi Jamra, rahimahullah ta'ala, he went on to say, I would love that there would be someone from the fuqaha, someone from the scholars of fiqh, whose only job would be to teach the people how to intend. And he would sit and teach this and nothing else because many have been duped except by their negligence of this affair. This great scholar of Islam is saying that I wish that there was just one scholar who his only job, not to teach tajweed, not to teach fiqh, not to teach sirah, not to teach mustala hadith, but to teach the people the importance of the niyyah. Also we find the Ikhwan, Imam al-Sha'bi rahimahullah ta'ala, he went on to say, it is from the manners of the scholars that if they know some knowledge that they would practice it. Once they had practiced that, that knowledge, they would preoccupy themselves with the practice rather than with the people. With the preoccupation, the presence amongst the people would be missed, and when they're missed, they would be sought after, and when they sought after, they would flee, fearing the tribulation in their deen. There is, ya ikhwan, something, al-khamul, which is remaining aloof, staying away from the people, and as this time brothers move forward, so the brothers can come in. Also, the issue of al-i'tizal. I'tizal is, i'tizal is staying away because you fear the fitna. There is big discussions on this, ya ikhwan. And we want to end it, ya ikhwan, inshallah ta'ala, with a few more statements where we find that Mu'ad ibn Jabal, ta'ala, he met Abu Musa, ta'ala, and he said, I seek the reward from my sleep, just as I seek the reward from my standing. He intended for his sleep to please Allah ta'ala, the Almighty. So we find, ya ikhwan, that your intention, your intention, and here we're going to, ya ikhwan, and explain it, that if you go to sleep with the intention, to worship Allah and get stronger and get rest, or you intend to eat to get stronger to worship Allah Ta'ala, you will get your intention for that, ya ikhwan. So as you look at it, and the scholars have said that one man, he was told that he shouldn't eat from the doctor. The doctor said, don't eat for this health reason. Another man, he was fasting for the sake of Allah, and another man, he decided not to eat because he wanted to lose some pounds. Now from the look of the people from the outside, it's three individuals not eating any food. However, their intention here, Ikhwan, is all very different. It's the same action. They're not eating any food, but they have three different intentions here, Ikhwan. So looking at it, at it yeah, Ikhwan, we have, inshallah ta'ala, maybe one or two more minutes. The great scholar Ibrahim Aytami Rahim Allah, he wanted to say, the sincerely devoted one is the one who he conceals his good deeds just like he conceals his bad deeds. So, yeah, why? If we had a brother here or a sister here that went and they gambled or they went and they smoked or they went and they drank some alcohol, you would hide your bad deed because you don't want the people to know. But the people of the past, yeah, why? They would, they would hide their good deeds just as much as they would hide their bad deed for fear of the people trying to make them what they call, and this is a big situation in the Muslim world, the issue of taqdis or rijal making the person more holier than anybody else. I have seen people, Muslims, have another Muslim come into the city, and the people make sujood to the individual, kiss his hand, kiss his feet, go into sujood, worshiping the person, because they think this person is so pious and so close to Allah Ta'ala. Whereas if the person was really pious, they would run away from people like that. So yeah, Juan, we find the last statement. And if anybody here wants to look to their heart to try to clean it up, then we encourage you brothers to do some research on the individual, all of them, from amongst them, Fudel ibn Iyad, who used to be a highway robber. He used to steal the people's money, wait for them. And when they came through the, the village, he would take the money. He went on to say, if you saw a scholar, or if you saw a worshiper, taking pleasure 
at the righteousness being mentioned in the form of the rulers and the children of the world, then know that he is one who is a show off, Yahweh. Arriya and Sama'a. Doing things, Ya Ikhwan, with the intention to be seen and the intention to be heard, Ya Ikhwan. Rather than to do the things to help to support and to encourage and to educate. It's very a big distinction, Ya Ikhwan. Why? Why are we doing things, Ya Ikhwan? It's something that I myself, I recently went back and I looked into the situation. And it's very difficult, Ya Ikhwan, why we do things. What is our intention why we do things? It can start out good and it can end out bad. It can, it can begin very bad and end out very good. This is something, Ya Ikhwan, that I myself, I'm checking myself on this issue, Ya Ikhwan. And I encourage the brothers to check their intention while we do things. And that if we do things, we should only do it for the sake of Allah Ta'ala and for no other reason. With that, Hadi Ma'indi wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. We ask you, O Allah, to clean all of our hearts from all the diseases in this dunya, the love of fame, the love of fortune, the love of wanting to be known, and that if we do your work, Ya Allah, that we only support Islam for your intention, Ya Ikhwan, and for nothing else. We find, Ya Ikhwan, that the heart is something, it flips around like a, like, like, like a fish, a qalb. It goes back and forth. So we must say, Ya muqallab al qulub tabbit qalbi ala dinik. Oh, the change of hearts, change my heart. So Ya Ikhwan, we ask Allah, and he makes our heart pure for his sake with that. I keep us alive. Thank you. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Ayala Salah